How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Dynamic Projectiles video. In this video, we are going to be organizing our projects. We're gonna take a step back from developing and we're gonna kind of do a complete reorganization. Now, unfortunately, if you don't have the personal edition of Construct 2, you won't be able to make subfolders like we're going to do. But by watching this video, it might influence you to purchase Construct 2 personal edition or greater because it's totally worth it for this organizational aspect. Having your game organized in any way is a huge advantage over what we've been doing, which is just kind of bum rushing everything and just kind of programming and going. So now that we're going to go back and kind of really, really isolate every single line of code to its own event sheet and folder, it's going to be a lot more clear in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our layouts. We're going to rename layout one and we're going to call this our game layout. And I like to actually have a suffix of layout for every, for every single layout. And I like to have a suffix of event for every event. So let me also right click and add a subfolder. And I'm going to call this our levels because this is technically our level and we only have one. And what we could do for our layouts as well, if we do have a menu screen, we could add a subfolder for our menus. I don't believe we're going to do that, but I'll add it anyway just to show you and I'll hit save. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a bunch of structures for our event sheets. So before we do anything with these two event sheets that we already have, I'm going to make some subfolders. So the first one is going to be called game. And then we're going to make another event sheet subfolder and we're going to call this one player. And then we're going to make another one and we're going to call this our weapons. Okay, so now we're going to go into every single one of them. And actually for the player, we're gonna make another sub subfolder, not sub event yet. And the reason is the player has a lot of things going for it. So for example, this is going to be our camera folder just in case we had more than one camera script or a certain camera action. Then we're gonna make another one for our input because you could do keyboard input and a gamepad input if that's what you would like to do. And then we're gonna have another one for our states. So if you had a state engine for your player, and in this case, we're just gonna be using it for our gun trigger event. Okay, cool, so we should be ready to go now. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our game, and we are going to add an event sheet and call this one our game event. Now this is going to be our hub. This is where everything will be included. So for example, if I hit N on the keyboard to bring up the select event sheet, all it's gonna have is our player event like this or something similar to that because we're gonna be renaming this. So bear with me for a second as we develop our game event. What we're going to do is we're gonna go into our player event and let's go all the way to the top and we're gonna look as to what we have. So we have our every tick, we have our player, we have our weapon setting and I think what we're gonna do first, we're gonna get the camera out of here. So let's do that. Let's go into our camera folder. Let's add the event sheet of, let's just call it our camera follow event. As long as you have the event at the end, I think it works fine. For me at least, you can do this however you want. You can name it whatever is comfortable for you. So let's go back to our player event and let's just copy all this because I guess I'm a little bit lazy and we can start to delete these things. And there we go, we have our camera. We might come back and actually make a camera controller for this. This is very simple and just so we had a camera object. So we could do some screen shake and stuff, but we might come back and do some linear interpolation if you guys want. Okay, so let's go back to our player events. And now that we took care of that, we can get rid of it here. And let's look at what else we have. So we know that the player is going to need to have these this animation component in here. So let's go to our states and let's add this. Let's add an animation state. And let's actually, we don't need to suffix it with the event there. So let's actually just go to our player event and let's cut all of this out and let's hit paste. So this is gonna be our animation state because this is where we're kind of setting the animation to idle and we're setting the animation of our weapon. And we can also include this here because why not? We know what it does. It's just setting the position of our weapon to our player's image point. So let's go back to our player event. And now we have our input right here. So let's go to our input and let's call this one our keyboard event. And let's go to our player event here and let's cut it all out. Control X and Control V. So now we have 
our keyboard event. If we wanted to make a gamepad event, we could just right click new event sheet and we can make a gamepad event as well and we can program that in. So I actually have a tutorial on that if you wanna check that out as well. So let's go look at this. This is also an event for our keyboard. So let's put that in there. And this can be more convoluted. You could have separate events for separate things. And unfortunately, again, in the free version of Construct 2, you're kind of limited to how many event sheets you can have and no subfolders. So if you're watching this, this is definitely a good thing to invest in is the personal edition. Okay, so we had this group called our gun trigger here. It's fine that we called it that. Let's cut it all out and let's go to our states and let's call this one our gun trigger state. Gun trigger state. And let's hit paste. And you know what, we can probably take out this underscore, it was just kind of showing you a different way that we can do it, but we'll keep it all very similar. So this is going to be our gun trigger state, and now we have it all very, very isolated, which is what we want, because now it's not all over the place for us to go look at. And by grouping it together, we're able to control that group by turning it on and off in code if we needed to. So it's also just nice to have this, I mean, we could always do that, but it's just nice to have this separate. And look, it's only five lines. So perfect. Okay, what's the next thing we have to do? We have our main function here. So this is going to go into our weapons folder. And for right now, we're just gonna make one event sheet. I think in a later video, we might split up the on pressed and the on down. But for right now, we're just gonna call this our weapon type event, since it is a function. And let's go back to our player event. Let's grab this and let's put this in here and minimize that. Let's go here and we can put our weapon timer on another event sheet, why not? Weapon timer event. Let's go to our player event and grab it. Okay, so now let's see what else we have left here. So we're gonna keep going on this. We have our keyboard on B pressed and this is for our, our, our own benefit or our debug. So let's go to our game and let's make a debug event. So anything that you need that is personal to you that's probably not gonna be in the overall game, we can put in a separate event. You can call it whatever you want. I like to call it the debug event, and there we go. Let's go back to our player event, and let's see what we have left. We have our screen shake. So I like to put this in the camera event, and let's call this our screen shake events. And hopefully you can see where I'm going with this and me doing all of this makes a lot of sense to you and you can just really figure out that this is the best way to organize your project. If you're making a serious game or just any game really, just having it organized from the get-go is really important. All right, let's see what we have left. On landed. Okay, this is for our dust. Uh, I'm not gonna make a dust event. It's not worth it. I'm just gonna put it in here for now. Uh, it might be worth it to you if you want to have a particle event. That usually is something cool that you could have. Uh, the spawn shells could be something cool that I want to put in here. So I'm going to call this my weapon bullet shells or just shells event. That might be something that I want to have separate. But same thing with the dust. You could put it as a particle event if you wanted to. But since we're already doing so many things, might as well just save that. Okay, and now we have our... Actually, this is our shells as well. Let's put this in here. And okay, so now we have to address our other events. Let me right click and close all, actually let's close all but this, and then let's hit save. And let's go to our sound event. So we can actually delete our player event because there is nothing in it anymore except for this include sound event. So our sound event was kind of uh, incorrectly named, it really handled our collision. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to our game and you could put this elsewhere if you think this this kind of does belong in the bullets. Maybe we want to put it here. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's make another subfolder. Let's call this our bullet collisions. Why not? We'll be extremely organized. And of course, you could even do a pistol collision event, machine gun collision, if you really wanted to. But I think we're just going to make a bullet collision event, bullet call event. And we can just take all of these and that never worked, so, or it did work, but I didn't like it. And we can just put it right in there. Okay, awesome. So now you're probably like, well, the game's not going to work. The project just will not work at this point. So let's go to our level and let's go to, actually, you know what? Real fast, let's go to our game 
let's make one more and let's call this our music event. We might be doing that in the future as well. It's controlling music, so having that there might be a good thing. Uh, let's go back to our game layout. And now we have to set our event sheet because we deleted the one that it was using. And we're gonna set it to our game event. So let's find our game event. And let's go to our game event now. This game event is our main event. So every one of these event sheets that we just created is going to be solely for this event sheet. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna right click and make a new group. We're gonna call this our player. And we're gonna actually nest some groups now. We're going to make another group by hitting G after you select that. And we can just really make this, well, let's think actually. Hmm. Let's start, let's start simple. So the first thing that we need to include in this is our keyboard event. So let's do that. Let's just type in keyboard event and let's add that and let's put that in here. Now, what I like to do even further is I really like to just make this our input and you could give it a description if you wanted to. And let's keep doing that. Let's, we might as well just do it for everything. Let's do it for our camera. Let's do it for our states and for our weapons. That way we know where everything is. It's all in one location other than if I was in, say, the keyboard event and including events in here. And that way it might get a little bit hairy and you might be like, oh, where did I call that event sheet? Am I calling that event sheet or not? So putting it all in one location, I find is really beneficial. So we have our keyboard event. Let's put in our other events. Let's go for our camera stuff and let's just type in camera follow event. Probably should have called it camera shake event by prefixing it with the camera or whatever these groups are or suffix suffixing it, it might be also beneficial to you. Let's put in our screen shake events. And basically we just sectioned off every single piece of code and we're organizing it in a better way that we can actually see it and we can understand, oh, we're not calling this event. Maybe we don't want this event right now. Rather than having 70 lines of code in one event, it's better to just do it this way. So let's go to our animation state. Let's put that into, let's just put that outside here because we don't really have a group for it. I mean, we could, yes we do. What am I talking about? We could just put it in our states. Let's also do our gun trigger states. The animation state is something I was working on in my fighting game and it's a little bit, it, it's really important. It's a very important state and I didn't, we don't, it's not that important in our test here but it can be a very important state. And by the way, you can double click just to open up that uh, event sheet. So keep in mind that this is a very important state by calling, by setting our animations like this. This is our dynamic call right here. So you might wanna keep that in mind, maybe, if you know what to do with it. Okay, next thing, let's go to our weapons before I get more carried away. Let's put in our collision. And let's hit N again, and let's put in our weapon shells event. And let's put in our weapon timer events. And let's put in our weapon type event. So now everything should be in there except for our music event because there's nothing in that one. Oh wait, our debug event. So let me close out of our player. Let's make a new group, just select it and hit G. Let's call this our game. And oh, that nested it. Let's put it outside and let's hit N and let's put our debug event in there as well. Oops. And right there. Okay, cool. So this is our new event. So when we play this layout, this is what's going to happen. It's going to separately call and include all of these separate event sheets. So if we hit play, nothing should be different. We should still be able to walk. We should still be able to shoot with bullet shells. We should still be able to change weapons, jump, Everything works perfectly fine, which is awesome. That is how I like to organize my projects. Again, I apologize if you don't have the personal edition and you can't organize it this way, but this might be good incentive to upgrade. I hope you learned a lot from this. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.